Aloha, my name is John Kanching, and welcome to another episode of Hospitality Hawaii, where I have the privilege of speaking to leaders, executives um, from all different fields of our very diverse hospitality and visitor industry. <clears throat> um, every two weeks, we have 30 minutes to gain insight, ideas, comments, suggestions, discuss concerns about what's happening in our industry. <clears throat> we also give our guests the opportunity to talk about their companies, their products, their enterprises, and to share what's going on and their own personal feelings about the industry. The objective is to provide different perspective, different points of view, and to provide information to those not only working in the industry, but also those are outside the industry. So it gives me tremendous pleasure and is a privilege to introduce um, our guest today, and they're all volunteer leaders who are giving their personal time to uh, helping to educate and provide information to not only our current um, team members in, uh, involved in the industry, but also to help nurture uh, and develop future leaders um, in, in the hospitality industry. So I'd like to introduce the team from the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association, the Hawaii chapter. First, um, we have Mari Cam Ipa, who's the current president. And then we have Dan Waxman, who's the vice president of education. And last but not least, we have the immediate past president, Susan Cowie Kohler. So welcome all three, and thank you for making the time to join me. Pleasure. Mahalo, John. Okay. So, so before we get started with Mari, who will share information about what HSMAI and the Hawaii chapter is, just some personal thoughts about HSMAI that has been around for quite a while. Um, I've always thought that education is the key to developing good, solid um, sales and marketing executives. And I know that through the years, HSMAI has expanded from just going from the sales and marketing side to also the revenue management and also the e-commerce and marketing side as well. So many of us work have worked with large corporations that have their own um, training programs, but many, many of our um, uh, team members and workers who you know, haven't worked with large companies um, just don't have that structure for good ongoing education. And this is where I always, I've always felt that HSMAI, both the Hawaii chapter and the national chapter has been a great resource to help fill that void. So Mari, maybe you can share a little bit about HSMAI and what some of the things that, that you're doing here locally. Sure, um, I'm happy to do that. Hi, um, and thanks again, John, for having us on um, today to share a little bit more about HSMAI. Um, just as you had mentioned, um, our association is uh, the leading global association for sales, marketing, and revenue management professionals, really representing all segments of the hospitality, hospitality industry and our partners. Um, with more than 7,000 members worldwide, our association has really become the industry champion on identifying and communicating trends in the hospitality um, industry, while also operating as a leading voice for hospitality sales, marketing, and um, revenue management disciplines. Um, as a member, individuals gain access to our global and local network, weekly tools, insights and trends, as well as discipline-specific education and globally recognized certifications um, in revenue and marketing, um, and also business acumen. Um, locally, our Hawaii chapter meets monthly, providing really, um, if I do say so myself, um, some really outstanding educational and networking opportunities uh, that are relevant not only to each discipline, but also to the local industry in general. Hey, Mari, uh, thanks for, for that introduction. Can you share a little bit about, about your background, how you got started in the industry, and what your current role is? Sure. Um, so I um, currently I am uh, the complex director of online marketing for the Kyoya owned uh, Marriott properties in Waikiki. 
So Sheraton Waikiki, Ralph Lyon, Moana Surfrider, and Sheraton Princess Kailani. Um, I actually started in uh, F&B in the industry um, back when I was an undergraduate student. I um, And you may, may remember this restaurant, actually, it's no longer there, but um, I used to work at the Shorebird as a host. <laughs> I didn't know it was um, I uh, when I was in college, I had um, done a semester in Japan, come back, really wanted to keep up with my language skills. And so they hired me because they were looking for they needed at least one person on their staff who could speak Japanese. <laughs> um, so I started there and um, later went into marketing and PR and other industries. And I just loved always loved to travel and I really loved food and I was really convinced actually that I wanted to start my own restaurant um so decided to go back to school um I went to Cornell Hotel School and got my master in management in the hospitality industry um there and then after when I was there decided I just want to eat food and I don't want to actually run a restaurant (laughs) so um anyways long story short after um, working in DC for a little while, I made my way all the way back home. Um, I had the opportunity to work for um, Holly Kalani's corporate offices and help with their digital marketing uh, initiatives, and um, then have been with um, Merritt Waikiki most recently. That's a great, that's, that's a great story, um, Mari, and, and I, I didn't know that as well. So, I mean, that, I mean <laughs> that's, that's actually perfect. Of, of what we want for the show um you know to you know because we don't necessarily need the uh and, and want all the high high level executives that make all these major decisions but we want we want to learn how people get started and and how they work their way up to the role that you are you obviously you hold a very important role uh for for major major hotels so so how do you get involved with hsmai to begin with you know, quite honestly, I got involved as a student when I was at Cornell. That was my first exposure to it. Um, and it's nice, actually, that that was my experience, I have to say, now looking back, because we do also have a student chapter locally that we work with at UH and um, recently in Maui, too. So it's, it's a great way for students to get really exposed to our industry, especially here in Hawaii. Um, just showing them how wonderful the industry really is. Um, and then the networking opportunities that they're that are available to them um, as students are just really invaluable as well. Great. All right, Dan, you're up next. So, you know, and I noticed when I was introducing everyone, everyone both Mari and Susan had their uh, middle names. So I guess you're Dan Kaniala Waxman. That your <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us about yourself, Dan. Um, you know, I know you're a longtime Outrigger uh, executive, but uh, but tell us a little bit about that, how you got in the industry, and and what are you doing now? Sure, sure. So, uh, like you said, I'm, I was with Outrigger for over a decade. Uh, I left about three years ago. So, my role in Outrigger, I was a senior vice president of marketing and distribution. I left Outrigger about three years ago. I had the great idea of starting my own business. Didn't realize a pandemic was going to happen. I started in the middle of that. Uh, but uh, it went well. My focus in my business is marketing, distribution, and technology, uh, which fits in very well with HSMAI. Uh, I spent uh, about a decade or so uh, in Asia doing different sort of travel businesses uh, and, and getting involved in technology and distribution uh, there. I got my, actually got my start, although as you might not be able to tell from my accent, I am not originally from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Uh, although this is not my first time in Hawaii, I actually got my start in Hawaii uh, maybe people who are old enough on, uh, might remember that little kiosk across the street from the Hawaii Convention Center. Uh, do you recall that, John? The, uh, that little kiosk that sold cheap tickets? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I so I actually yeah, got that's my... That's the corner where the ABC store is, right? That's or, right. right. Well, used to be, right? Or yeah. used to be, right? They knocked it down for the... Yeah, I think the yeah. Mandarin is coming there soon. Yeah. Uh, but so, th- so I got my start at that company, Cheap, cheap Tickets, uh, back in the late 90s. Um, they were a call center based business. Everybody thought the mm-hmm. business was that little box. They used to say, well, you, all those people work in that little box. Uh, but we actually had five call centers and over 600 employees. Uh, and I, I got my start as a trainer, training people on the call center side. Of now, the who was the, who was the founder of that? I, 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 the name is on my tip of my tongue and he sold it Mike, to Mike, Mike Hartley. That's right. He made a, yeah. he made a, he made a ton of money selling it to, um, 
what Sundan. company did yeah. he, sell he sold it to Sendan. He went he, yeah. the best timing in the world, Mike. A great guy and a great family. But he 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 sold he he went public at, right at the peak of the uh, internet boom, uh, mm -hmm. and he sold right before nine eleven. Best timing in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had he had a great run of it. So. Uh, I was there. I got my start there, and and we we actually put an in. So we were just a call center based business. We put a mm -hmm. we put a web front end on it and exploded, and then I became kind of the web guy from then on. And I've been involved some degree in travel web travel technology ever since. Great, great story. So so what is your engagement with uh, HSMAI, and how do you how do you first get started, um, uh, part of being a member, and then you know, taking um, a, a leadership role and a voluntary role. Basically. Yeah, so I actually started on the national. I didn't get involved in the chapter until really last year. Uh, I was involved at the national level for, for a bunch of years. I actually was the chair of the marketing and advisory board uh, for a couple of years. Uh, and I just found it to be such a fantastic organization. I mean, er early on, you mentioned that we're all volunteers. So none of us get paid for this. This is just volunteer work. And we do it for, I think we do it for a couple of reasons. And Mari and Susan can tell me if they agree. But number one is we love the industry and we want to give back, right? We want to help and, 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 and just get people interested, help people get educated, help people network. Uh, that's the altruistic motive. And then the selfish motive is it's a great organization to meet people, to network with people, uh, to get educated, to learn. Uh, I know I used to joke with people at, on the national level that, I literally live on an island, so I don't have a lot of information. So I want to get off that island and learn more. And one good way to get off our island, both literally and figuratively, uh, is to meet people outside, right? Outside of our organization, uh, outside of our geography. And, you know, find out, are we doing the right things? Are there other things we can learn from other organizations and other people? And uh, that's, the, for me, the, the huge benefit of the organization. So, so Dan, I mean, before we move over, over to Susan, um, you know, obviously, as I mentioned before, the organization was just sales and marketing uh, executives, right? Um, and now, the, obviously, the progression is revenue management and marketing distribution and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about that progression probably over the last maybe five to seven, maybe 10 years, and, and maybe what you see in the future? Like, you know, is the focus more on, Sales or is it on uh, technology and um, revenue optimization in a lot of different ways? And, and maybe it, it'll, it'll always be a combination of both, but, yeah. but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, my answer is going to be just that all of the above, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think what you're seeing is a convergence uh, of the three because they're, they're, they're not separated anymore. When I first came to Outrigger, we had the marketing team and we had the digital team, right? That doesn't exist in most, most organizations anymore. Marketing is digital, right? It's not, there's no separation between the two. Uh, and sales is becoming more and more digital. You can't run a sales department without having effective digital tools and the ability to understand and implement those. Uh, so there's lots of crossover. So, you know, there, there's a convergence. They're all still extremely important. You see a lot of organizations now have changed their structures. They have, you know, they, they have chief commercial officers or chief revenue officers now. Uh, instead of having, you know, necessarily a CMO, a CMO, a revenue person, you have somebody who understands all of the disciplines and can figure out how to converge them because they don't work very well in silos. Mm. <clears throat> Great. Yeah, no, no, it is, it is very interesting. And, you know, as we look at all the different job postings that come above and then the companies that are reorganizing their existing structure, you know, I mean, you know, when you look at the former Sheraton, Starwood organization, it seemed like they always went from um, individual properties having their own director of sales and marketing to clustering, and then every five, six, seven, ten years, it'd go back the other way around. And now you're seeing organizations that just have their director of sales uh, just focusing on group, and they have their revenue or uh, marketing distribution people doing all the FIT and transient business, and they have a, a, a focused marketing person as well. So, so it actually is really, really interesting to see progression. And, and I think it probably adds more employment opportunities for the young people because, you know, things aren't as um, all in one anymore. I mean, now, now you've really got specialties. Um, well, uh, just to add to that really is this, again, we're here to talk about HSMAI. One of the plugs that I have for HSMAI is they help you learn about the other's discipline, right? 
So mm-hmm. if you're a revenue management and you want to learn about digital marketing, there's a class you can take and a certification you can take. If you're a marketer and you want to learn about sales, same thing, right? So you can sort of cross pollinate and get that information. In fact, uh, again, shameless plug here, but I teach a class for HSMAI called the Hotel Digital Marketing uh, Essentials class. Mm -hmm. Uh, And what we do there is we help people understand the basics of hotel digital marketing so they can speak the language and understand it and and work better with their colleagues. Great. And and there's a, a similar revenue management one as well and a sales one as well. All right. Thanks, Dan. Hey, we, we've actually got a great question, but before before I bring up that question, um, I definitely want to introduce Susan Howie Kohler, who is the immediate past president, and she's, I think, been the immediate past president for the last five years or so. Uh, but Susan, welcome, and tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, what you're currently doing, and, and what, your, what your focus is on with HSMAI. Sure. Well, I, as a local girl, I did go to school on mainland in Denver, and I had my start in Southern California with Sheraton, was with Hilton for many years before I came, finally made it home, and uh, with the MC Suites Waikiki Beach Walk, and then transitioned over to the Westin, the Moana Surf Rider, and, which became part of Marriott, and currently I am all, still with Marriott on the North Shore. So for me, um, certainly I've seen the evolution of sales, marketing with revenue management as a discipline and also digital marketing come along. And it's really been enlightening and, and appreciate, appreciate what HSMAI has done on being able to um, participate in that evolution. I got involved in HSMAI in Southern California, um, but really um, just as a member, I really got engaged when I came back to Hawaii never worked in the islands. Um, It was my way to be able to um, network and um, build my build my network here locally, as well as to tap to take advantage of the resources um, and also develop. So um, joining the board was pretty early on, but it gave me exactly what I was looking for. And that was to be able to um, certainly spread my my web and get to know a lot of people in the industry. And while doing so, be able to really foster the, the commitment to some of these other disciplines. I always believe, and my background is sales, um, my, I always believe that a sell, salesperson really needs to understand these other disciplines in order to be successful. And as Dan had mentioned, it's, you know, it's important to understand they're all integrated, and they are. If you try to be too siloed, you will be left out. And so for me, going from a larger property now to a smaller property, even more so that, you know, certainly at a smaller property, you're wearing a lot more hats and it's really good to be able to have an understanding of all of these different facets. So what are you focusing on in your volunteer work with HSMAI? Well, I am um, currently as past president, certainly I get to choose what I would like to do, which is great. But one of the things that, um, that I am um, involved in is in the um, upcoming golf tournament. Um, You know, certainly in order to um, end membership and in order to really um, um, continue the efforts of this great organization, it is about um, um, supporting our members, increasing membership, um, providing the resources and certainly the programming um, and also to provide some um, at, sub, um, sponsorship for our students too. Because you talk about future leaders, this is a perfect opportunity that we're able to help with that. So the organization also subsidizes the students that participate in the student chapter. In order to continue the effort that this chapter has made over the past year, where so many of our members were actually impacted, it certainly was the industry that was impacted the most with the pandemic. Um, in fact, a really good statistic to understand is 75% of our board members actually were directly impacted, either furloughed or their positions eliminated, whatever may have happened. Um, we did lose a number of members, board members who um, happened to leave the industry altogether. But the positive is we actually brought on seven new board members, individuals who are really energized and interested in wanting to give back as well. So in our efforts, um, certainly in in order to support our members as well as non-members, we've been providing some great education. And in order to do that, we also have been looking for sponsors. 
So um, the upcoming golf tournament is twofold. Certainly is to continue that effort, but also to benefit the Hawaii Food Bank. And so on July 23rd, we're hosting the 11th annual golf tournament for HMAI Hawaii um, at the Hawaii Prince Golf Club. And um, there are many ways to get involved. Um, certainly, we would love for you to come out and participate as a team, come out and have some fun. But also, you can participate as a sponsor. You can also volunteer or donate a prize for our silent auction or raffles. Um, there has been such a wonderful response, and I do think that our members are so eager to get out, be able to network again, and come out and just have you know a great day. So, yeah, we invite you all to come out and join us. All right. So, Susan, you brought up a good point, right? So, so yes, the probably the hospitality and the visitor industry was the one most affected, and and probably for the longest period of time too, um, as hotels are still coming back, and you know. You know, I know a lot of the hotels in San Francisco and New York are just opening up now this week, or, or if they're even open. Um, so, so what did the national do? Was there anything, any support from the national with respect to membership? So, you know, as as you know, executives were furloughed, especially the sales and marketing and all the other other uh, you know categories the members fall in were furloughed uh, and or even laid off. Was there any concessions that, that are being made to, to keep the membership or or is it just we'll just kind of wait to see when the economy picks up and then we'll we'll pick up from there? Actually, the, um, there's no doubt that a lot of individuals lost memberships because of the fact that either they were furloughed or there were budget cuts. The national organization really stepped in to help and whether it was to offer some very special member membership pricing or discounts or even subsidies, some of the, they actually also provided grants to those individuals that wanted to continue their education or gain certifications. So it was a really wonderful show of support from our national chapter for our, all of our members worldwide. But here locally, it was about providing education at no charge, you know, continuing to engage our members and provide education so that they could stay, um, you know, sharp in mm -hmm. their in their knowledge um, but it was also a way to stay connected and we really felt that people needed that it was important because a lot of us were separated right um, and what is probably one of the biz biggest successes for this chapter this past year is the fact that we were able to to expand to the neighbor islands so this virtual uh, um, you know platform has provided us to increase our memberships on Maui and the big island and also include them in our programming as well. Well, you know, it's interesting right now, as more of the hotels and companies, whether it's airlines or transportation or attractions, are starting to reopen or they're reopened and businesses getting back to close to pre-pandemic levels, people are starting to get hired back. You know, I, I, I hear, you know, the revenue, more revenue people are being hired back, more sales and marketing people are being hired back. So. So it bodes well for membership uh, growth for HS HSMAI. You know, I will say, though, you know, just from experience, um, maybe just as a thought, you know, uh, and, and I don't know, and I, I'm sure you've done that, but but it's the people who control the purse strings, right? It's the directors of finance and it's the general managers who are the ones that really need to be sold on it, especially now during this time when when they're looking to, to keep overhead expenses as low as possible. Maybe that's an opportunity for all of you to, to do a concerted effort against the general managers to make sure that they keep the membership uh, funding going, or at least they, you know, it, it might be a way to attract new members. But anyway, let, let's go to a question. We actually had a question from, from someone who's viewing. And the question reads, there is a lot of debate uh, now amongst the politicians regarding whether we now have too many tourists. Now, obviously, this is this is specifically HSMAI related. Um, is there a future for the sales and marketing in the tourism industry if the powers that be decide that they want to discriminate or disincentivize tourism arrivals? <clears throat> it goes somewhat to the discussion that that I brought up a little bit earlier mm -hmm. before the show about instead of HTA being a tourist tourism marketing organization to being a tourism 
management organization. So who wants to comment on that? And you want to sure, I'll start. I, when, I, when I first uh, moved to Hawaii, I think the, the, the count of tourists was about five or six million. Uh, I think mm -hmm. in our peak, we're about 10 million. Right. So certainly there needs to be better management of tourism, all right, and, and how we approach it. Uh, but I, I think sort of taking this snapshot in time of this post-COVID, you know, uh, what people are calling revenge travel is probably a mistake, right? Uh, what we're having is this 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 weird dynamic of uh, an influx of tourism, which, by the way, is still lower than normal, right? But it doesn't appear that way to people because things like restaurants are at 75 percent, but with six feet distancing. So it feels like it's much more crowded. Uh, people just got used to having nobody on the roads anymore, and now we have people again. Uh, so, you know, we have this rush, and we, we're the one, you know, international uh, place for people to go now. Of course, we're not international, but you need to get on a plane and fly over an ocean to get to us. They can't go anywhere else, really, right? They're limited to it. So we, we've got that boost as well. So, again, I think taking a, a snapshot in time and saying things are really bad now is, is a wrong perspective. We have to take a sort of a look at, at how it's going to unfold. And I think a lot of people might not be as happy when all the other destinations open up. Uh, everything is back open 100%. And we're mm -hmm. still at lower than, you know, 2019 occupancy levels because this is our tax base. This is our employment base. So those are things that, you know, absolutely need to be considered. I, I just think people need to look at what's happening now as a really short-term issue. Over the long term, it's going to... Uh, you know, it it still needs to be managed, but it's not going to be what it appears it is now. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Dan, is that, you know, once Europe's open, which it has recently, right, France, Italy, Greece, some of the other European countries have opened up. Once they open up fully, uh, once Canada opens up and once Japan and Korea and all the other Asian countries open up, which they will eventually, I guess once they feel comfortable with the level of uh, vaccinations they have within their own countries, then all of a sudden, you're absolutely right. People have more of an option of where to go. Um, and then, um, you know, what, what happens to our September, October, November, and will the first quarter of 2022 be as strong as what people suggest that they might be right now? So, so you know, I don't know. My, my, my response to that viewer who asked the question is that absolutely. You know, there might even be more of an emphasis on sales and marketing as more destinations open up and things kind of get back to normal globally, uh, where we're, again, fighting for our market share. For the most part, we're, as you mentioned, Dan, we're the only one of the only games in town. So, so yes, once things open up, I, I, I think the emphasis and the importance of having uh, trained, educated um, optimal working experience, sales and marketing professionals is going to be even greater than ever. Um, any comment, Mari or Susan, to that? I agree, and I and I think you know, and kind of just bringing it back to HSMAI, what we talked about. You know, we talked about the different verticals and silos, but really looking for opportunities where we can all work together um, collaboratively, not only at the hotels, but with our partners and the industry and in the community to make it something that can still be successful for us, both as professionals and also as residents of the community. All right, Mari, we, we actually have, uh, we are running out of time. So as the, as the current president of the Hawaii chapter of HSMAI, um, how would you like to leave the viewers with? What, what messages and, um, and last comments would you like to leave? Now, I just um, want to thank you again, actually, John, for the opportunity to come here and um, share with you just everything about HSMEI. You know, as you've heard from each of our individual stories, which are so different, yet mm -hmm. so alike in how yeah. they relate to HSMEI and what we've been able to benefit um, just personally and professionally from it. Um, I think that that's what keeps us engaged as volunteers and keeps us going. Um, we really just want to provide value um, for the industry. Um, so we really hope that uh, if you're not already involved with HSMAI, um, there are so many opportunities to get involved, like we said, with our upcoming golf tournament, or even um, we do, typically do monthly um, events. So information about that is coming up soon as well. Um, so reach out to us on social, by email. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing people in person again and getting together. 
Great, great closing comment, Mari. Um, again, Mari, Susan, Dan, thank you very much for your time. Um, you've been watching the latest episode of Hospitality Hawaii. Uh, my name is John Conching, and I am privileged to be able to, uh, every two weeks, bring individuals like, um, like the three of them here today to share their thoughts, ideas, and opinions about our visitor industry. So until next time, aloha and have a great afternoon.